material performance at such level, which is difficult to achieve with conventional materials. In many cases, the required macrostructure and associated with this macrostructure properties cannot be achieved in one particular material on, and even in the conventional composite materials. The new conceptual approach to expand the material property space was introduced by Ashby in his uh, uh, hybrid materials, which he defined as combination of two or more materials with specific arrangement of constituents, providing an additional degree of freedom. Here in the first picture, we can see that if we combine family one uh, M1 with uh, some properties, with the family M2 with other properties. So using different architecture parameters, which he called shape and scale, uh, we could uh, get out of the average properties uh, towards the uh, new space or out of space with higher properties in family uh, than family one or family two. And it was shown by technical application in the Boise's paper that uh, the uh, shape and architecture of one of constituents can change parameters like, for example, strain hardening. You can see the graphs with different uh, uh, composite materials or hybrid materials with different uh, shape of uh, one constituent. And you can see how different the uh, string hardening can be. It can be indifferent to the shape, like in this case, or can increase significantly when you've got spiral reinforcement. Um, with the opening of severe plastic deformation, um, we can say that these new methods, we call them shortly SPD, they can open a new avenue for combining two or more materials into the hybrid materials. And they open even more opportunities and they open um, new processing alternatives to the conventional composite production method. And also they allow to, uh, they allow to, to do amendments of Ashby concepts. These amendments consist of the following. It's shown in, in this diagram. We consider hybrid material as not only as combination of family M1 and M2 and also architecture parameters, shape and scale, but we also, due to severe plastic deformation, we can create the interface zone, uh, which shown, designated here as IF. Interface zone between M1 and M2, which is, has significantly different properties compared to both families and which can be considered as additional material and additional degree of freedom uh, during this um, um, production of hybrid materials. So it was demonstrated that the properties that obtained by severe plastic shear co-deformation of metals uh, are superior to the properties of either individual constituents and to the properties of composite materials obtained by conventional processing routes. Uh, and significant enhancement of properties of these hybrid materials attributed to formation of measurable interfaces. In the picture here, you can see uh, hybrid materials consisting of two constituents, aluminum and magnesium, and you can see the quite large uh, the diffusion zone between these two, which has completely different properties, uh, different from uh, properties of aluminium and magnesium. And on TEM, uh, in TEM figure, you can understand uh, why we have this different uh, hardness in this case, because we have uh, different intermetallic form within a uh, measurable large interface zone uh, and um, they of course increase the hardness of materials. 
So if the interface which between M1 and M2 can be tailored by different parameters, we can introduce quite large volume fraction of these materials in the fabric. And that gives us additional possibility to change the properties of fabric materials and to get better, uh, better properties in the fabric than was possible before we used severe plastic deformation. What is severe plastic deformation? Let me give you specific of these processes. First of all, during this process, the shape of the billet doesn't change after deformation because the deformation mode is a simple shear and can be repeated back and forth, still keep the uh, uh, shape the same. Secondly, uh, SPD introduced large plastic deformation up to 1000% and more in the material. As a result of this uh, very severe shear deformation, the grain, grains within the um, constituents uh, refined and then refined to nanoscale range between 100 and 500 nanometers. This we normally, those grains we call, or materials we call ultrafine grain materials, UFG. And this grain refining leads to enhanced mechanical and physical properties. What physical mechanisms are involved in the interface formation, which we talked recently? First of all, that um, we can say that while the two um, uh, materials are brought into the contact by high hydrostatic pressure and then the shear is applied, so we are having a shearing of asperities, an interruption of oxide field at the surfaces, and we bring in the fresh surfaces into atomic contact under high pressure. And the first mechanism is intermixing, mechanical intermixing of atoms. Next, if the um, uh, temperature and time are favorable, the interdiffusion between two constituents uh, happen. And of course, it depends on parameters. And if the temperature is even high enough to form intermetallics, then we have a third mechanism the phase formation or intermetallic formation. Here you can see between aluminum and copper, the intermetallics which are formed as a result of severe plastic deformation. So by changing parameters of uh, severe plastic deformation, we can trigger a different mechanism or trigger the sequences of these uh, mechanisms and change the width and the severity of the um, form interface formation. So what controls, what parameters uh, control the interface formation? So first of all, the properties of these multi-phase interfaces are influenced by each of constituent material and temperature, of course. Uh, it depends on their chemical affinity, atom diffusivity, and the change of the crystal lattice in the interface zone. The intensive shear deformation with imposed hydrostatic pressure causes deformation used atom, atom, atoms mixing. What we notice that the grain refinement in vicinity of interface is even more severe. We can reach the grain size between 20 and 50 nanometers in vicinity of interface. If you look at the picture, again, the same uh, material, aluminum and copper, they formed uh, or joined by uh, severe um, plastic shear. You can see that the grain size within, in vicinity of interface is significantly lower than the uh, grain size in the, each constituent. And you can see it's in here and you can see it in, in here, in a round interface. Uh, you can ask me why we have a difference, why we have do, uh, two pictures. This uh, picture grain refinement depends on the architecture of aluminum copper uh, hybrid. And it was um, uh, a tube 
with aluminum outside or aluminum inside uh, of copper tube. So that's why the pictures are different and the grain refinement is different. So this is again an argument in respect to architecture. So this simultaneous grain refinement in the constituent um, and localized shear strain uh, in the interface leads to increase in the fraction of high angle grain boundaries and formation of ultra fast diffusion passes. The sub grain boundary generated at a severe shear create additional short circuit diffusion passes responsible for closing the pores at the bonding interface and creation of the interface layers. All this uh, ultra fast uh, diffusion is um, described in the publication of Divinsky and Rilde. Uh, and it was non-inspected, it's really a discovery in nano and ultrafine grain materials, and hence diffusion. Um, we studied the role of shear uh, in interface formation by making multi-layer uh, aluminum titanium uh, uh, sheets. And what we noticed that we produced this multi-layer sheet by uh, process with the limited shear uh, and by another process with intense or severe shear component. And if you look at interface for normal processing, limited shear and severe shear in interface, you can see that in the picture B, we cannot see the width of the interface, at least in uh, high resolution TEM. While the severe shear we have significant about 500 nanometers or more interface with very small grains, much smaller than into the constituents out of interface. And uh, if we do a milling within this interface, uh, so we can uh, we can trigger the third mechanism of intermetallic formation. And because diffusion is much deeper for this kind of interface, so intermetallic is also wider you know, when we have this additional shear. So the role of severe shear is uh, mostly important. Also, we uh, evaluate the interface for aluminum steel hybrids by using different methods, including EDX scan, line scan analysis, scanning TEM and high resolution TEM, also atom probe. And what we can say is that in all cases, um, additional shear creates, which represented here by red uh, lines, creates much wider interface compared to limited shear, which represents here by blue lines. And uh, if you notice that uh, all lines have some inclination we can see that for different uh, volume fraction of one constituents, we have wider interface, and for another volume fraction of uh, one constituent, we have smaller interface. This is again argument in terms of um, architecture. The volume fraction was represented by different thickness of the uh, sheets in multi-layer uh, sheet uh, hybrid material. And it shows that um, uh, architecture of these hybrids was important. Uh, uh, now I'll, I'll go to some examples of our work. In uh, many cases, uh, our architecture was inspired, uh, inspired by, by nature. And one of example, when we uh, consider different architecture inspired by nature, I will tell it in a few words later, uh, was uh, aluminum copper um, hybrids to improve electrical conductivity and strength by using uh, reciprocal extrusion. It's one of severe plastic deformation process. The schematic is shown right here when the uh, conductor is moved from one chamber to another back and forth. It was uh, uh, shared uh, about 
four times at high temperature. And uh, the conductor consisted of aluminum billet, which embedded the different kinds of uh, copper helixes. And uh, we've been uh, studying how the conductivity uh, is influenced by the parameters of these helixes and by volume fraction of um, um, copper. So here you can see uh, the image of the conductor, which is, consists of aluminum and copper spiral. And the, if we have looked at this picture, the electrical conductivity shown against specific volume uh, and for exactly the same volume fraction of copper, we have quite a wide region where we can change electrical conductivity just by changing the parameters of the, uh, this uh, copper helix. And it's shown by this uh, width of the blue region, for example. Uh, as I said, the, this helical architecture were inspired by biological systems um, because it's very common uh, in, in this system to, to have uh, uh, sp spiral reinforcement and it's normally have high strengths and stretchability in, in these natural uh, organ uh, organisms. And in the engineering structures, um, the uh, value of spiral um, enforcement was shown again in the work of Boaziz. And it showed that uh, uh, bows and fractures strain and tensile ductility strain hardening are uh, improved if you have uh, spiral architecture. That was the motivation of this work. And what we were able to, to show that, um, first of all, uh, these kind of um, conductors were processed by different SPD techniques. And we found that the one was especially beneficial. It's, as I mentioned, reciprocal extrusion. And uh, we, we can say that these hybrid materials with helical reinforcement, they exhibit much higher wheel strength increased load bearing capacity and higher stiffness due to nonlinear behavior of this spring inside of, of the aluminum. Uh, and uh, it was much higher than uh, compared, for example, to linear reinforcement. Even uh, if we consider theoretical uh, line here, uh, shown by dash line, it's a theoretical linear model prediction of strengths. Uh, you can see that uh, the properties of our samples are much higher than predicted by uh, theoretical model of linear mixture. The same, we can say that um, conductivity for uh, this uh, um, sample or, or conductors was also enhanced. Of course, it was increasing with the volume fraction of the of copper, uh, but um, also we have shown that for the same volume fraction of copper, the small uh, the the small pitch parameter of the um, helix and the big winding diameter normally are beneficial for electrical conductivity. So uh, for this um, conclusion, we can conclude that um, parameters of helix can be optimized in such way so that both con conduct electrical conductivity and mechanical strengths are improved. And what is the reason for uh, improving of uh, strengths and conductivity? First of all, I would like to, to show the image where the, um, you can see the uh, large interface um, between aluminum and copper consisting of the intermetallic. Uh, and um, it's normally brittle and not really conductive. 
and uh, due to severe plastic deformation we were uh, we managed to dissolve the uh, you know this layer and uh, we and form super saturated solid solution which within the interface zone which followed by re precipitation of nano sized particles of uh, one of the phase and these nanoparticles not only increase the conductivity uh, sorry the strength of uh, material but also they are not as detrimental as this kind of uh, interface for electrical conductivity and therefore um, simultaneously uh, electrical conductivity and strength increased. Um, <coughs> As I said, we, uh, we, we found that the um, small pitch and big winding diameters are um, beneficial for electrical conductivity. If we consider limits, so when the pitch goes to zero and the winding diameter is going to the maximum possible, uh, so we, we can eventually do the uh, copper tube filled with aluminum inside. And that is, uh, leads me to the second example which, uh, called copper clad aluminum conductors produced by severe plastic deformation at room temperature followed by annealing. Uh, the previous example was done at high temperature and now we are showing that it can be, uh, there is possibility to trigger uh, the diffusion mechanism at the later stage. So these samples were processed by <coughs> severe plastic deformation and uh, namely it was a cupped a couple of times and uh, what we at room temperature and what we can see is that interface for, formed after room temperature severe uh, intensive shear deformation <coughs> lead, uh, leads to intermixing of crash asperities of constituents and they mixed in the spherous flow and causes deformation induced atom mixing. Here you can see that uh, pieces of copper within uh, aluminum uh, which are uh, breakage of asperities and uh, uh, oxides and then uh, due to this severe shear, the grain refinement uh, by uh, rearrangement of uh, accumulated dislocation took place and many new defects were introduced uh, within the interface and it created the additional diffusivity passes. So then after we made an annealing, the, this subsequent annealing resulted in accelerated interdiffusion and it add to formation of this large interface. So the, um, here you can see the graphs in the points which are started from the center of the conductor and go to the, um, to the edge and it shows hardness after deformation, blue columns, after uh, short annealing at high temperature and after uh, long annealing at low temperature. And uh, you can see that the hardness is increasing and we can say that annealing, mostly annealing results in decrease of hardness in the aluminum, but an increase in hardness at interface. You can see that annealing in pure aluminum just drops the hardness while annealing in, at the interface uh, aluminum copper mixture and uh, here in the copper sheath, it uh, leads to opposite effect. It's effect of um, increasing hardness due to annealing. This uh, uh, very unexpected effect was explained by uh, agglomeration and annihilation of deformation induced vacancies. It was be before us also observed uh, in this paper, in um, 
Zengeri, Kerber, Schaffer, and Zeket Bauer, strengthening due to heat treatment. Um, so it was in, uh, observed by other scientists, and it's really uh, unexpected because normally during due to annealing, the hardness is supposed to drop. Yeah, and uh, we believe that this was relevant to our case as well, that um, annihilation of deformation induced vacancies because uh, um, the, the deformation has been done at um, room temperature. And what we have shown, depending on architecture of this uh, copper plate uh, conductors, in, uh, for different, you can say, of, of copper or different thickness of, uh, we obtained the conductivity, because this is conductivity, uh, much higher than expected. So, the expected conductivity according to theory should be at this level, it's shown here, and you can see uh, after um, short milling at high temperature, we can reach higher uh, conductivity. And this uh, and uh, strength was also improved. Um, um, and and the, the very last sample I would like to show you again, expired by nature. It's a crea creation of the cancellous inner architecture, uh, which uh, is, is similar to our bone structure. And uh, in this work, we've been taking, uh, we've been making compaction of powder by severe plastic deformation. Um, namely equal channel pressing with back pressure and we used a special uh, space holder method where the titanium and magnesium uh, powder were mixed with silicon and we created composites with 60 and 50 percent of percolating porosity and uh, this silicon was a sacrificial space holder uh, what is interesting that uh, this kind of um, uh, structure of the leaching the um, sacrificial materials, it fully uh, coincides with requirements for bi biomedical porous titanium, which used for orthopedic and dental implants. It has good machining capabilities. Uh, it, um, creates the cancellous bone structure and it has very strong uh, uh, walls. Why these walls are strong? Because they're creating hybrid bulk material with very good connection between uh, walls. And you can see it's here and, uh, and it's um, ultra fine grain material. So it's very strong walls between pores. And if we compare it to the um, uh, normally uh, or traditionally uh, done implant, which has sintering of the powder, so the strength is several times higher than uh, when uh, using conventional technology. And uh, this kind of open porosity, of course, is required to create an implant. The interesting result is also that uh, here, okay, it's compressive strength of the um, yeah, implant. And uh, it relates not only to the better bonding of the particles, but it's also to intensive grain refinement within the implant wall. You can see that it's growing up. And um, mortal say the um, cell viability, which was measured uh, by uh, metabolic activity in MTS assay, uh, cultured by three and seven days, has sh shown that uh, the viable cells and initial attachment of this cell uh, did not depend on the structure during the three days incubation. However, after four days, 
the number of cells, uh, viable cells on porous uh, titanium created by our method uh, was increased substantially and was growing much higher than for uh, coarse grain uh, or implant made from the coarse grain powders. And, and uh, it is a special project which was shown how the, the cells are proliferating and uh, the uh, nanostructure of the walls was important to create uh, the uniform, uniform growth or proliferation of living cells. And uh, now to the conclusions that um, uh, I had many other examples uh, for technical applications like defense uh, shields and others, but due to time restriction, I only have shown few relevant to the um, inspired by nature architecture. So the conclusion is that severe plastic deformation processes were shown to be a useful tool to produce hybrid materials with concurrent nanostructuring of the constituents. Shear strain, hydrostatic pressure and temperature of processing play an important role in enhancement of the formation and properties of measurable interfaces. The width of interfacial zone correlates directly with magnitude of the shear strain and architecture of the hybrid material. The volume fraction and the nature of interface plays a decisive role in the improvement of mechanical, physical, and some functional properties of a hybrid material.